Hello and welcome to another episode of the Backdoor Cut podcast with myself, Peter Rice, Owen McCabe and Dara McGurn. Dara has finished his dinner there now, he's kept us waiting. We don't have David or Paddy Clifford this week, unfortunately, but we do have the two lads. So, lads, on the week off, what have we been getting up to? Although every week off is a week off for yourself at the moment, Dara. Uh, I suppose, even though you're working very diligently to get back. So, Owen's ripping into you there off air about saying that you're soft um how is the rehab progressing have we had a good week it seems like we have based on the mood yeah no it's it's felt like a way gone for me just actually being involved in training um yeah got a few minutes in a friendly last week as well which is probably my first minutes in a long long time like nearly a year i was just thinking so which is pretty mad to be honest um but it was just it's a it felt like I was playing a league game again just the whole day, even leading up to it. Like, I was just buzzing. But, uh, yeah, um, Makia might be back on the pitch before Makia, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll throw it over to Makia then. <laughs> on no county games this week. You were talking last week about playing club fixtures. What's the plan? Yeah. What's going on? Have you broached that topic? Or is that something that you're thinking you want to do if you're not getting game time? Yeah, got a few minutes for the club there yesterday. Um, we won our first game. Um, it's the first game of the league yesterday. Came on, 20 minutes to go. Um, got a good win. So just 20 minutes, nothing too mad. Um, we had a pretty big session on Saturday. So everyone was well warned that they were not to play full games. Um, but yeah, it was one of those ones. Had an agreement with the manager. It was like, yeah, I'm good for sure. 15, 20 minutes, just being sensible. Um, not to overdo it and not... Yes, it's important to get minutes in the legs, but after a big training week there, um, and coming back from the hamstring injury, still like it's it wouldn't be ways to go and uh, go straight into the thick of it. Like so, um, twenty minutes was plenty, um, and you could even feel the legs during that twenty minutes. So no, I was happy enough, but good to get good to get game times, and actually got the first senior game with the wee brother. Like so, that was good. That's class. Um, they're always going to be the ones that you remember, I suppose, when you you get to line out with close family or close friends were you the only one or were there a number of players that wanted to get game time playing for their clubs at the weekend on and then maybe I'll throw it on Bodhi and your perspective on when there is a break in the National League like there is this week is there any harm in playing club fixtures or is it actually maybe a positive to keep the ball rolling because I know Dara you always say that you like playing week on week when you are playing uh, to just have a feel for it, have a feel that you're actually in the season and have no breaks, essentially. Yeah, so I suppose, <laughs> I don't know, it when you're probably constantly starting and playing full games week on week, then maybe it, it can be a good thing to get a, a week off here and then, um, especially if you're somebody's carrying something, if you're carrying niggles or carrying knocks, obviously it works in your favour, but when you're fully fit and you know, you're know you usually just chopping with the bit to play every week and on that week break, it's either going to be a heavy session that weekend anyway or an in-house game or you're going to have a friendly so you know if you're going to choose you're probably going to choose a friendly like so yeah um, that's probably the perspective of it in terms of a player like again it's it's fully dependent on the minutes you're actually getting within the setup and it depends on whether you're probably stiff or sore or carrying a niggle um, yeah and Owen then were you the only one that broached that with the manager and asked could I get minutes or were there a number of lads that wanted to get out and, and play for their clubs yeah no there was definitely other lads in the same boat um, lads that maybe haven't been playing as much football and it, you you totally get it as well like boys are training flat out and only game time like nothing basically a game so play, players want to get as much game time under their belt as possible like even from the perspective of if they do come on in a county game like they know that they've had minutes under their belt then and they want to they know that they're they're up to the sort of standard, I suppose. Um, even the intensity of it, like like training is great and his games are great, but just nothing beats playing competitive games. Like it just there's another step up to it. Like so, um, no, there was a few others there. Um, but the agreement was it was a, it was a half to be played. Like so, um, yeah, I think most boys were were good with that. What do you get out of it when you play a half? When you play a half, it's just it's getting the. It's just another, I think it's another intensity level. Maybe not in terms of like actually physically, but I think from a mental and from a like an adrenaline perspective, like you're 
because it's a competitive game, there's another step up in it compared to maybe like an in-house game. Yes, our in-house games might be even more taxing on the body and more like you're covering more ground, you're moving at a faster pace. But I think from like a perspective, there's definitely another pressure to it and another a different buzz to it, I suppose. So um, I think it's just, yeah, it's 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 getting the feeling of, of, of getting competitive minutes under you. Probably that's going back into the club are going to be key players for the club as well. So I think in terms of confidence and just knowing that you're getting uh, more touches on the ball, uh, executing the skills under pressure, um, and I think even just a bit of freshness too. Like I think a change of scenery, a change of environment is always good. Um, there's a different buzz that comes with playing with playing with club mates too. Like so, I, th- I think there's yeah, there's plenty of benefits that come from it. But as Dara says, it's not if you're carrying a niggle, like you know, you have to be sensible with it too. There was a lot of lads who were told. They weren't to play because they played significant game time throughout the league. Um, which again, you know, is fair. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, I do think it's a it's not a one size fits all approach. You have to be sensible with 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 how it's sort of uh, laid out. But yeah, I do think it's beneficial for players to be getting game time. Is it ever a point of contention with the manager that like a player wants to play with the club? And potentially they are carrying a niggle and maybe they haven't been playing that frequently with the county. And I'm not talking about you, by the way. Or it sounds like I am. But at times, or with other players, does the manager ever have to put a, put the hammer down and say, like, look, I don't want you playing? Yeah, definitely. Definitely there is. Um, even thinking back to last year, my case, like, there was club games there and they probably shouldn't have played in from a selfish perspective. From that, for, for for the body not being updated, like, and the body not being fresh, um, that's what probably set me back a good bit last year too. So, there are definitely are times where the, there are players that you're that are not in to play. There was even a club made of mine now, like he was, he wanted to play, and he was like, "Not, nah, you're not playing if you get injured in a 20, 30 minutes of football, I'll fucking kill you." Like, so, <laughs> uh, he was told he was well warned that he wasn't allowed to play. Like, and then how do you manage a county? panel when some players are going away and playing on the Sunday having trained on the Saturday and other lads are potentially just having a full day off like what does the Tuesday night training session look like then Dara or Owen whichever one of you wants to jump in on that it's not something that I would we would typically um have dealt with in the past it's probably it would happen more maybe in Antrim than it wouldn't for Mana and that side of things like it just wouldn't even be to be fair there's no games on at the moment like in, in for Mana and there isn't for a long time like so and um, yeah, to be honest, the last couple of years there hasn't really been any like there has been none of that in terms of like some boys can go play, some but some players can, but it's either all or it's just typically been all or nothing. And um, sometimes there has been a case where the whole squad's been sent away and just play a, a certain weekend if there's like a massive gap between maybe it was a league and championship. I think that happened maybe two years ago. Um, but in terms of the Tuesday night, like. Sometimes if there's lads who have played, say for example, even just after a league game, if 16, 17 lads have played a full game, played, you know, bodies are sore, but then you've got, you might have 15 lads then who are more who haven't played anything. So it's about probably first 30 minutes of the session could be just something light, just getting boys moving, getting kicking done, getting, I suppose, bits of skill practicing. Um, and then the other part of the group might have to go off and do you know, more intense training session or a more intense session and to try and get volume up, try and get load into the legs and try and, I suppose, keep them in decent shape because you can very easily lose shape throughout a league campaign if, if you're just constantly doing what the, the first 15 is doing and you're getting no minutes and you're and you're just going, you're going backwards in terms of everything. So um, I would love, to be honest, to be able to, like, as a, Someone coming back now. If I if I get get the opportunity to play in a friendly game or get twenty minutes here and there, it'd be brilliant. Even just for the enjoyment aspect, like if you're if you're a player in a squad who isn't getting any minutes, or you're struggling to make squads, it's, it's not an enjoyable place to be. And and no matter what anyone tells you, like it's it just isn't because everyone wants to play. So if you can, if if club or if counties could find a way to get players who are from maybe number twenty two right up to thirty three game time within their clubs, I ain't getting it make it a lot better for, for those players and more enjoyable it's just a challenge I suppose that different counties are presented with given different numbers like obviously Antrim is going ahead with 
their games in the league at the moment. Dublin League is going going on. But then other players in other counties that I'm speaking to, they're still in preseason. They haven't played any games and they're still building and they won't play games till April time. So it's just a challenge that's presented, I suppose. May is so late. Like, do you see it with your club mates at home, like that they get frustrated because they don't get a chance to play games this early? Or are they just used to it at this stage, Dara? It's, I, I wouldn't hear much frustration, to be honest. There wouldn't be that much of that, really. Um, I think lads are happy enough as long as they're back in training and collectively and there's going to be the friendlies and stuff going on, you know, over the next probably two months. So as long as that kind of side of things is is, is kept in, it, it probably works in their favour that they get a bit longer to actually probably get in shape because a lot of them are coming back chasing their tail. Like, if we're being honest for a lot of them so um, yeah I think they're happy enough to be honest just tipping away and, and building slowly May is probably pushing the boat a wee bit too too much <laughs> I'd say come April time that could be a different story um, I think most most club players will be mad to, to get football you know end of March start of April so um, yeah it, it's a bit of a long stint to be fair like. but does a friendly scratch that itch like is it the same thing, like, or is it kind of like, oh, we have to play this friendly here now, like, I really don't want to? It does, it does for a few weeks. It definitely, it definitely works for a few weeks. Like, it's, it's, it eases you into it. I don't get many players would want to go straight into just, you know, the first league game. So, after probably, I would say, two, two, three friendlies, you're, you're just wanting to get into competitive football, then it gets a bit, it gets a bit shit. And with players in those friendlies probably being rotated a lot, can it be difficult to kind of nail down what your position or your role is going to be for the rest of the season? It's hard to know. A friendlies, like, rarely, when I'm thinking of my own club now, like, we're very limited in numbers, like, and, and the squad depth's pretty poor. So, um, boys who come championship would be playing in, for example, wing half back as their main position. Throughout friendlies could find themselves in midfield, could find themselves centre half back, like, so. It's a lot of experiment would be going on. Um, it wouldn't be massively realistic at this time of the year. It'd be more just enjoyment, getting minutes and building probably game related fitness. So, um, yeah, I don't think not not in my county anyway, not in our club would would there be much of that going on in terms of competition for places or or anything like that. To be honest, and we're a senior club within for one, like. But it's an interesting one, obviously different roles for club and county. Oh, and what position did you come on at the weekend? Come on, uh, <laughs> wait, my my natural. Natural habitat. Just avoiding. <laughs> uh, well, we've worn that that number fourteen. So that was an old one. Uh, I was in. But uh, yeah, you want wing forward and uh, happy enough. Yeah, you know the way the game goes anyway. You're up and down the pitch. Um, uh, working on both ends. But uh, oh, nice to uh, remind myself of. Yeah, you're not the forward mitts. You're not a. You're not a cornerback. <laughs> but is it a struggle at all to? Yes, into that role. I know you're going to say you're a natural, so definitely not. But to change from being a cornerback to a wing forward and playing a different role, did you find yourself almost playing a little bit like a cornerback playing wing forward rather than a natural wing forward? There, there was actually a couple of times. There was one, one or two times to track back and then getting forward again. I was kind of like looking around me, making sure everyone was set up, everything was set. And I, like, I found myself being the last one back in the stage. I was like, I'm not here, but, uh, and then getting getting up for a kick out was another one. I was like having to get up to the other end of the pitch to be there for a kick out. Um, just sort of like two wee minutes where I just had to sort of reset myself. But um, all of that, it was good. Like the way the game was going towards that stage, it was like just a case of sort of getting hands on the ball. Um, just trying to like be that sort of link player, getting the ball from the back end of the forward line. Like so, um, yeah, it was no, it was nice to come on. Is there a benefit to county players playing in a different position for their club than they play for in the county? Because obviously you trying to get into, even though you're saying you don't need to try to get into the mind of a forward, it's going to benefit you as a back then when you go back to playing as a back because you're going to know what the forwards are trying to do. 100%, yeah. I think I th- I used, I, I've come on it from two point like two uh ends of the spectrum where like I've been used in a lot of different positions with the club and hated it. Uh because you weren't getting that sort of consistency. But then if you sort of flip it now and with experience you're able to look at each position, you're able to learn from each position and see what's sort of going on and pick up pieces of it. 
so that whenever you do go into a certain position, you can kind of spot things, especially if you're in the corner, like if you're playing cornerback, you're playing the fullback, like, everything's in front of you. So you can see, like you can see what's happening sort of in every day and you can pick wee things up. Um, and then even like from a player, like playing as a half forward and looking for the type of pass that you want to make, the type of movement that's going on, again, you can sort of review that and think as a defender, right? Well, if he's looking to play this sort of ball, where do I need to be standing or where do I need to be? So yeah, it's definitely beneficial. Like, like I think, anything the more about the game you know the, the better the game IQ like the more it's going to stand you in, in any sort of position like Dara do you have any interest in going dropping back the lines into the backs at any I, stage I was, I was just going to say I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to try laying out full back for the club this again <laughs> learn a few learn a few things <laughs> you might be a bad full uh, back have you ever played in the back Funny, I've never played in the backs in, in Gaelic football. I've always played midfield or further up. In Hurling, I would have played full back when I was like probably 13, maybe maybe a bit younger actually. Maybe, yeah, a bit younger than that even. Um, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't fancy it to be honest. Eh? It's, it's been funny, in training the other night, I ended up running about as a defender for 15 minutes and was not enjoyable. Depends who you get stuck on. If you're stuck on someone like me, you might be alright. You're just sitting around the square, but <laughs> when you're stuck on a runner eh, or a speed merchant, like it's it's not enjoyable. Was it like playing a different sport to a degree? Yeah, it's like playing. I don't even know what it's like playing. You're just constantly chasing someone, like, and and you're responding to what they're doing all the time. So it actually is like it's completely different. Um simply based off that the fact that you're actually responding to what someone else is doing instead of actually choosing what you want to do um yeah but more respect for the defenders he does that's what i was just about to ask i was like did it give you a little bit of respect because usually you don't have any respect whatsoever for them on this podcast so maybe it's just for <laughs> own um i want the forward to her <laughs> we'll have to get a back's perspective on some uh some week in the in the future so, like, Owen, that conversation that you had to go back and play with the club, was that something that you went to the manager with or was it something that the manager came to you and uh, broached the topic with you? Yeah, I think it was a case of lads, a lot of different lads that sort of been in the same sort of boat. So there had been a few fouls that sort of approached and saw to see what the crack was. And uh, there was it never sort of, well, it was, but it wasn't officially addressed in front of everyone. It was more sort of, once Andy kind of got the feeling like right boys kind of want to go and play the this game's on um he kind of went to players individually and was saying listen do you want to do you want to get game time sort of thing so he kind of put it back on us which was good um and I think everyone was kind of sensible enough in terms of where they were at like if lads weren't getting game time they want like the agreement was you're allowed to play a half because we did a big session on Saturday um so lads wanted to take advantage of that but it, lads he was also saying the lads listen if you're carrying niggles or you're carrying knocks like you know we've still you, you sign up, the, you commit to something, like so you still have to sort of keep yourself right for that commitment. Um, and I learned myself last year from trying to go back and do too much that I ended up um, shooting myself in the foot in the long term. Like, so it was definitely something I was cautious of, 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 of not overdoing it. Like, um, and the club managers were, were understanding of that too. So, um, yeah, like it was good that Andy sort of came to us to chat about it um, and kind of gave us the, gave us the green light, I suppose. Are each of you given tasks or things that you're to work on when you go back to play with your clubs, or is it very much like hands off, just do whatever your your club manager tells you to? Yeah, I think it it probably is what the club manager tells you to do. But I think any player who is operating the high level, they probably will have a couple of things that they want to work on week in week out, or a couple of things that they want to do well. Um, like for me, with having limited game time, it was literally just get my hands on the ball, get touches, and use the ball well. Like that was the main thing. Um, it's just literally just keep it simple. But there was like one or two things where I had had a different conversation with me on the during the week, um, and like basically got a few things. It's like right, but what kind of do you need to see from me, so to speak? Um, and he gave me a couple of things to work on. So that was obviously in my head of like right, here's another chance to get more reps of that in. Um, so like training throughout the week, that was one thing I've been sort of deliberately practicing. And then uh, even in the club game as well, I was like, right, here's a game scenario. Can I? How can I work on it here as well? So, um, yeah, like I think players are going to have something deliberate that they want to work on, but there is that element that just go and play. Like I think we're going to enjoyment there, like to let you just go and enjoy it, go and enjoy playing. Um, like even found myself just kind of, there was times you just weren't even thinking, it was just kind of like flow state took over. You were just sort of enjoying yourself, enjoying being out there. So 
um, it was good to get into the Stranger Things as well. We've had a few questions come in on the page, and one of them that is quite appropriate for what you're just talking about there now is about dealing with nerves before games. Does it change in regards to your mental state going into a club game versus going into a county game? Do you have more or less nerves playing for the club or the county because maybe there's more weight on your performance? And we'll start with Owen, given that you just had the experience of getting into the flow state that's so sought after last weekend. I think it depends. The big thing is you can get caught up in the play of the occasion. Um, I think that in the past, playing club games, even playing league games, it would have been massive because you didn't have as much exposure to them. But then I think as you get more exposure, even with county level as well, like it, it, it isn't as, it isn't as big of a deal. Uh, don't get me wrong. The further you go in competitions and the bigger the stage, it does kind of become a bit more of a of an occasion. But I'm sure if you ask the likes of the Dublin players or the Kerry players, like maybe a, a big day at Crow Park to them, it's nothing these days, like because they've been there so often. Um, but yeah, I think it's I guess that exposure to it, like definitely, the more you're in those sort of scenarios, the more natural it starts to feel. Um, so I would say. At the minute, going and playing club games at times isn't as it doesn't it doesn't feel this sort of you don't feel this nervous going in. Um, but if you're going into a championship game, you're still there's still uh there's still that sort of championship buzz and that championship cha- championship energy that comes along. Like so, um, I suppose it kind of depends. Even though you're not supposed to play the occasion, I think the occasion does kind of feed into it as well. But then you run the risk of being not up for it enough and then have the poor performance. But it's it comes back to the idea of looking at the inputs, you know, doing what needs to be done throughout the week from a training perspective, preparation perspective, and then uh, it's just whatever you do to sort of get yourself ready for games, whatever sort of like routines, rituals, sort of habits that you have, trying to keep them the same and um, literally seeing it as the, as the same task, uh, trying to do as much as you can. Like. What about yourself, Dara? Because you obviously take on a lot of responsibility for the club when you do go back playing with the club. Does your mental state differ or do you try to treat every game as the same? It's, it's a hard one to know. Like, I wouldn't feel it so much with the club. Well, I didn't obviously play with the club last year. I'm trying. I was just trying to think back there. What am I actually like? Um, I think it definitely increased a wee bit as it went on, and it became, I suppose, a more established county footballer. I started to feel it a wee bit more with the club, that responsibility and that, I suppose, yeah, small small bits of pressure. So, um. You would definitely feel it in the lead up to games a bit more, but you'd be able to you'd be able to find a way to manage it. And then once you get into the game, again, you're just as Owen mentioned, you just end up in the flow anyway. So, uh, I suppose you end up coming to terms with the fact that that's normal to feel that way in the lead up to games. And um, I think that's where a lot of players go wrong is they when they do feel that there, they nearly don't know how to deal with it. Whereas when you if you just expect it expect yourself to feel that way then you're in a much better place to actually deal with it so um in terms of the county probably i suppose you're feeling that weight of expectation while you're also say i suppose playing in front of bigger crowds and you could be playing on if it's championship you could be on the tv as well so you if you probably do feel that even more so um but yeah i suppose it's a hard one to know i suppose that weight of responsibility or that excitement or nervousness it's just there and it, like, it's hard to like say whether one before one game is more than another I feel like it's just whenever it's before a big championship game that is just what you feel you feel that nervousness you feel that excitement you feel that I suppose respond, sense of responsibility and then you just have to manage it I suppose um, and that nearly just feels the same before all big championship games Did you feel any aspect of that going into the 20 minutes of the friendly that you played or was it very much just like I'm going to go out and just play whatever I can do or do whatever I can do and play however I play Yeah no I, and I, I went into that with a pure probably completely no expectation just a complete enjoyment like I'm going out here and I'm just going to enjoy it and um, I did feel the whole day that kind of excitement though of just like <laughs> yeah a bit of a buzz just knowing that you're going to be on the pitch um, which is nearly the same sort of feeling that you get before any game um, you do <laughs> it's just a funny one but you know you know, you have a match coming up and you end up in the toilet more regularly like, and <laughs> and that's probably that's a consistent before any game for me it doesn't matter what if it's that fucking 
I don't know, a friendly or a, a big championship game. Is that what you're chasing all the time? Is that what you miss when you're out injured? Yeah, it's like that adrenaline rush and just that excitement and buzz for matches. You just don't get it when you're... You don't get it in training. You don't, that's what I mean as well in terms of players within the squad who don't get any minutes. Like You're just completely lacking that one thing that you're there for and that's playing. Like, um, So yeah, when you're out injured, like you're massively lacking that. And then I suppose when I did have it last week, it kind of just made me realise like this is what like you play for like it's the only real reason is just playing football playing playing matches like nothing else even comes slightly close and is that why you're always on about on the podcast playing matches and you love playing matches it's for that buzz and is that why you hold the perspective that you would prefer if there wasn't as many breaks in the year and we just went game by game week by week <laughs> I suppose so yeah I don't are you know addicted? I, I... you're addicted to matches are you there <laughs> I'm addicted to kicking points. <laughs> I haven't kicked a point in a while, actually. I didn't get a point the other night. It was raging. Are you like that as well, Owen? Like, is it the buzz of matches like that? Is that why you play? Yeah, it has to be. Like, training's, training's great. And when you're not training, you miss it. Then you want to get back in with the team. But just nothing beats playing games. Like, the buzz of it, the big days out. Not, not even the big days out. Just playing competitive games and coming off after a game, knowing that you've put in a shift. Um. Yeah, like ah, you you just can't you can't be playing games. Like even when it's, you know, when you're, as I say, when you're not training with the team, you want to be back with the team. When you're training with the team, you want to be playing games as well. It's just a challenge game, and then you're wanting for championship, and then you're looking forward to the next game, and you want to get as big a run as possible. Like so, it's just it's 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 nearly a never ending cycle. Uh, <laughs> like, chasing the next, it's just like chasing the, the next game, and then the lows. If you, when you lose, like the lows are. It's incredibly low, and when you win, the, the winds or the highs are incredibly high. Like it's it's a roller coaster. Like, are there any players that you've played with that maybe don't feel that? Because I know, like, I've heard a lot of really prominent sports stars talk about the night before games, not wanting to play the game the next day at all. Like, I remember hearing Sam Warburton before he captained the Lions against All Blacks saying. Oh, if I book a flight tonight, I, I, I won't have to play tomorrow and it'll be all over. Like, is there an aspect of worrying versus like being a warrior? And have you seen that in squads that you've played with or teammates that you've played with previously? Owen, we'll start with you. Yeah, definitely seen that before. Like, if I think to my own case first, like, when the games where I was like most nervous going into or worried about the most were the games where I probably wasn't prepared for. Um, reading, 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 haven't read Sam Warburton's book. Like I'm sure he was part of the gills. Like, um, so well, I'm still mad that, that 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 he sort of felt that way. But again, that could maybe be the occasion as well. You know, being captain of the lands against the All Blacks, like that's mad. Um, Decolonia was like, um, but now like from my own from my own case, it's probably those games where I didn't feel prepared was probably where I felt most. Um, nervous or, or, or sort of worried good in the and then that's where sort of the issues you know your 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 sleep maybe isn't as good you know your 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 preparation in the game that nervous energy and you end up wasting energy that way as well so i think more recently in the last couple of years like the confidence that comes from knowing that you've done all the work you've done everything you possibly can and you've been doing that consistently over time like that compounds over time massively like so i think uh when you know that you've done a serious shift of training, you've done everything you possibly can, you're ready come game day, like you're just ready to go and play, like you're you're excited to go and play, and you're actually looking forward to it. Um, don't get me wrong, you still get the the, the nerves at some stages, like whenever you are playing against, uh, when you are about to go out into the game. But uh, as I was saying, like the more you do it, the more you're in those sort of environments, like the the kind of easier it becomes a wee bit. But I think the big thing is like looking after your preparation as much as possible. Um, and when you yeah, when you put in the work, you're excited to show, like, almost show off the work that you've done and just sort of let loose on the pits then. And it's just a case of going out and um, enjoying it again. Like, we've said enjoyment. Like, but literally, you enjoy it so much more when you're in a, when you're in a good spot. Like, so I think the preparation is a big thing makes it a lot easier. Dara, is there anybody you've played with that, ha- like, gets really nervous for games and you've been questioning, like, why are you nervous? Like, you're kicking the lights out. Like, you're a class. Or is that just you? <laughs> I have. Ron shot freak. He heard I was marking was he? <laughs> yeah, he? Yeah, he was. He was. He was crying in the toilets before that game. <laughs> um, 
No, like I have, I've witnessed big, big players like be in the toilets getting sick at games and and things like that. And um, so yeah, they obviously experience that extreme anxiety. Maybe not so much that they don't want to play, but just that like it's 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 crazy what signals the body can send to you when it can sense that you're nervous, you're excited, or you're I suppose yeah, you have anxiety or something about what may happen. Um, like there's been times where I thought I thought like I'm sweet I, I barely even thought about this game like I nearly forgot I had a game and I, and my body's still showing signs that I'm actually nervous which is pretty mad like um, but no, I haven't really come across too many who you know might would go out and, and not want to actually play the game like um, from my experience as a zone says like once you've done the work you're just raring to go like you just you want to get out there I suppose as well it, there's probably different perspectives in this from a defender's point of view to a forward's point of view because a defender not that much is within your control in terms of what the forward actually does and so that's probably that in terms of when you haven't prepared well there's probably a massive fear of someone just tearing you to shreds like or, or coming up against a top class forward whereas a forward if you haven't prepared well you might see forwards just go hiding in games and, and they can easily get away with this so Definitely different perspectives there. Like, are there any players that you've played with that you question? Do you like playing games at all? Like, because you're always complaining that we have more games coming up and that you're in rag order and your body's banged up. Dara, but you're laughing first, so I'll ask you first. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the thought of someone doing that. Not really, to be honest. You'd always hear, you'd hear the older lads giving out with their body and. You know, they're sore, they're stiff, they can't do it anymore. Like, but never, never in a way that like she said that I want this game to come or I don't want that. They still, you know, they still love playing matches and still love being involved. They just probably don't enjoy how sore or stiff they actually end up after them. <laughs> On similar thing with you, yeah. Um, I was just gonna, I was gonna say the same thing happened to the team I complaining, but I'd probably start complaining whenever the fixtures get thick and heavy and there's a game wet. Friday, Sunday, a couple of weeks. So it's definitely been the case in the past. I remember uh, the Antrim League at some point just gets fucking stacked with fixtures and you're playing games Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, like, and it's, uh, you feel the total on it, all right? So especially when you're carrying something, you're like, right, just get me through this and sort of get the head in and get me through it. Um, uh, there was one year we had games, I think we had like Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, maybe Sunday again, and it was like heat wave in the middle of July. <laughs> it was like 20 degrees and it was just like ah oh, fuck just just get through this like uh but yeah no nah, like other than that no you don't you don't hear too many people complain that like you just you just die uh, you're mad for games like and you just want to play games so uh you're doing whatever you can to get the body right for the next game so that's the main thing we used to play a friday sunday in the in the league like a few a few years back with the club it used to be a regular thing and um, and i actually remember like it's 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 a it's a tight turnaround, but I remember like it's nearly just exciting having that challenge of two games in three days and just like how I suppose you're covered can you get your body for the next game? And um, I kinda enjoyed it when it was like that, but it it does take a huge toll, I suppose, on your body. Like I remember we would have played like that and then there would have been county under twenty games thrown into the mix as well on like a that's what it might have been. It might have been Club Wednesday and Sunday, but then you would have had like a club or a county under twenty game thrown in the Friday evening, and you were just like like high like three games, five days like, and you're just going how you meant that it's everybody going to ask you you're under you're twenty you're young you're fresh but okay you're you're eighteen nineteen trying to play senior football as well um so ah it's madness like we even had there was the under twenty championship went ahead there on Saturday and we had lads playing that and then playing the game on Sunday as well it's fucking Jesus. Mad. That is mad, like. When you start that week, are you just solely focused on the first game that's coming? Or in the back of your mind, are you thinking about the next game after that as well? Even if you're not consciously thinking about it, it's in your head. Probably probably the, probably are to the extent, but I think it kind of depends on where you're at as a team as well. Like, if you're in a strong position where you can kind of afford to maybe rest a few boys, take it a bit handier, and you know that the results kind of come, it depends maybe who you're playing against as well. You can kind of go right. We'll, we'll attack this one. Maybe we can pull back a wee bit in this one, and then we can sort of. But uh, 
early rounds of the league, I think everyone's just everyone's just looking to get points on the board as soon as possible. Like so, everyone's just going for it. Like so, I think it that kind of depends. I think you kind of have to just go sort of laser. Maybe at the start of the week, things are a bit more optimistic and you're a bit fresher and you're going ass is great. And then after one game, you're going one. Right, the game to get through here, and then maybe by the third one, you go on just to get me through it here. But uh, I think it sort of depends. But yeah, I think I think somewhere in your head, you are thinking about the next game, the next game, the next game. Um, or if you're in that scenario, if you've been in that scenario a few times, you're kind of going right, get through this. But also, if I'm able to pull back a wee bit and manage myself through it, then you know you need to do that as well. Dara, where's the hot take on this one? Yeah, no hot take on this one. Um, I think. You're always going to be thinking about both games, and it, I think it depends who you're actually playing within them games. I am um, like sometimes you may be playing a weaker team in the first game and a more challenging game on the Sunday or whatever, and you're nearly always going to have that one in the back of your head constantly throughout the week and even throughout that game, trying to make sure that you're not killing yourself on the Friday evening, maybe. So, I suppose context is probably was probably always key in that situation, but. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a few years actually since we've we've been in that scenario. I think they've they've actually done away with the Friday Sunday fixtures, so nothing to worry about anymore. In that scenario, though, do you talk about that with your teammates? And talk about both games because obviously I would expect that the manager would never talk about the game after the game that's coming. So is it just with like your peer group within the team or if you had ta- captains or team leaders, like do, you, do they talk about it um, or is it very much hush hush or is it, sometimes is it open and you're like, look guys, we're going to rotate for this game because we have this game coming up in the future. But uh, like that sounds so far to me. I don't think a manager is ever going to say that. I think at our club, like for snow, you're not going to be rotating like um, maybe one, two players. Like we don't know the we wouldn't have enough depth to be able to do something like that. Um, and usually when it's in that scenario, you've had a game on the Sunday before that. You train Tuesday. You might mention, right, we've two games this weekend, but like there's no there's no massive amount of prep going on for two it's a, it's two late games at the end of the day. Um it's not like county level where you're sitting down and reviewing video of the other of the two teams coming up the weekend. Like it's it's to be mentioned vaguely realistically. The prep would be done in terms of probably who's picking up who on the day, the day, the day before the game, maybe the day of the game, and then the same for the game at the weekend once it's done. So, yeah, there wouldn't be an extensive amount of research going on really out there. Yeah. What about your cell phone? Similar enough to that, what Dara said about like right start of the week. You know, you might have trail on the the Tuesday, or you might have a game on the Sunday, and the talk is literally right, my lads, big chef coming up here, heavy period of games. It's a case of getting the body right between games. Um, they might say right with this, 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 but quick turnaround, you're not. Yeah, you're not really talking about the game after the, the the next game. It's it's just focusing literally on one game at a time. And I think that's all from a player standpoint and from a manager standpoint. That's all you can do because when you do have games coming thick and heavy at that sort of frequency, like managers probably can't plan ahead too much. They're kind of going right who do we have available after after a game. You're seeing who sort of comes through it, and if there's any sort of niggles or injuries pop pick it up too. So, um, yeah, it's a case of like right, you're three minutes, but. You're not getting too far ahead of yourself anyway. It's like literally one game at a time. That's, that sounds a bit foreign to me, obviously, with my experience in uh, Dublin club football because a meeting after and a review of video after a league game and before a next league game is essentially a non-negotiable. Like, it happens, like, for every game. But, like, maybe that is not common around the country. <laughs> that's, you're on the, big, that's, that's, the money, the money, man. No, no but but usually it would be the head coach lead, the leading that. You'd usually it'd be the head coach lead leading it, so it would be. Yeah, um, because like I'm not going to be going up and do video or, or breakdowns or anything like that. Like I, I'm just sitting there and trying to learn as much as I can about systems. Yeah, we would, exactly. we would just, we would do bits of video, like, um, but it wouldn't be like at the level of a county team where every single game is reviewing the game before extensively and preparing for the upcoming game like would you would you sit down and do video on the team that you're about to play in the in a league sometimes but not as often usually it would be three clips or four clips from our last fixture of what we potentially have 
need to work on um, and what we've done well and then maybe get up what the predicted team for the opposition is going to be, who's going to be picking up who, what different forwards like to do, what we'll be doing in different scenarios. So it is probably, it depends what you consider extensive preparation, um, but it's probably only a, a half an hour. Maybe. Within Fermanagh, like, it's a small it's a small county, so like, when you're coming up against teams, like you, you already know that team inside out, you already know who you should be picking up who, who's marking who, what way they're going to play. Regularly, will there be massive amounts of changes from year to year? Um, and so, and throughout a league campaign, like a league isn't treated, you know, massively seriously. Um, there will be video in terms of our own style of play and what we need to improve in a bid towards improving for the championship. Like, so, yeah, there's, there's focus on us as a team, but in terms of preparation for other teams within the league, like you already kind of know them. You kind of know you're you're just waiting to see who's actually going to line out that day because you don't even know until you probably land to the pitch, um, and then fairly quickly you're able to, I suppose, detail man marking jobs and just play to the system and yeah, the system that you've been playing all year. Is that same in Antrim? Or... Yeah, similar enough. Like you would get bits and pieces of it when you can. Um, I would say like a lot of games in Antrim probably aren't even videoed. Um, I'd say championship it definitely picks up a lot more. Like when you have a bit of time to prepare for it and you've been running and you, everyone takes the championship a bit more, a bit more serious. Like so, when you are coming in the championship and you know who you're playing against, and then maybe there is video sort of coming against, like coming up with teams. But even management will go and watch games and they'll come back and they're saying right, this is what they've done. Here's what they're working on. That sort of thing. Um. So there is there is bits and pieces of it, but it's not a case of like, right after every game we're in to review this for sitting for thirty minutes. But there'll be there'll be clips thrown in the WhatsApp or clips thrown in the in the group chats or whatever, and here's what we're working on, or we'll we'll, we'll, we'll sort of chat through it in training on the Tuesday night or whatever. But um, yeah, it wouldn't be an official sit down thing. Maybe more so come championship time, and it's sort of taken up a level. But uh, yeah, it wouldn't be happening every week. Again, sometimes with the games coming thick and fast, there's not always the opportunity as well. Um. It's a case of just right get the get recovered, get on to the next one. Um, but yeah, definitely more towards championship it'll be picked up like. Maybe that's a problem. <laughs> we're off there. We're 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 not getting the group park. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. But you did touch on two important um topics there, Dara. One was resources. So like if you don't have the resources to sit down and pull it up on the screen regularly and have a, an area where the team can go into after training to go through um, or have the gym in the same facility as the ground, then it might be less accessible and then you might be less likely to do it. And the other thing that probably is going to get people listening to this and is always a touchy topic, I suppose, is you know who you're playing every week. Be, or every year because it's the same team that you're playing every year but in Dublin it might not necessarily be because there's players being transferred in um, I know obviously Dara you would never leave your club but at some level would you like the opportunity to take on players from another county or another club in a tournament format where potentially you're playing with players that aren't necessarily from your own club or is that just completely foreign to you? Yeah, I don't think I've ever thought about that actually in my life. Um, like when you're playing county football, you're already, you're already getting to play against different players for half of the year anyway. And that those players change significantly nearly year to year. So for your, probably a good question for your standard club player who only gets to play within his club. Um, I'd say it's something that they probably would like to, to do. And they're probably sick of seeing the same old faces every single year. So yeah, a bit of variety or a bit of something, something different maybe at the in preseason. I know, I know there is something that runs in Ulster, an Ulster league or something where you know certain clubs have the opportunity to actually enter it and they actually do play. You know, loads of different clubs around Ulster. I think that actually might be already just going finished. on, isn't it? Going on at the moment, yeah. is it? Yeah, There's a so... Leinster league as well, but like. Having been to those games, the Leinster League probably, like, we won it with Thomas Davis last year when I was with them, but, like, we took it pretty seriously. But I would say that going into those games, it was probably more relaxed 
than even a league game. So it's not the same as playing a team glorified Charles Mas. Like I'm not kind yeah. of, yeah. That was my point of contention and my argument against playing more games, obviously as the S and C coach. <laughs> but sure, it, you it got, probably does fill that bucket. I thought you wanted more. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um but oh to throw it back on you then, like and to address the elephant in the room, would you like the opportunity to go up against Shane Walsh and Paul Mannion in the same forward line? Or would that be a nightmare? Um, I think it would be interesting. Like, of course, like, now nah, listen, you want to play against the best. Like, even growing up watching our club, like, when I was sort of under 12, under 14, our club was massively successful. Like, um, they were playing in Ulster, they playing in all Ireland. It's like, and you were going, fuck, that's class. You want to be in that sort of stage. And you saw some of the players they were going up against. And, um, yeah, like, they would have played that Kaku team just before Kaku started coming through, just, just pipped them. Uh, playing against like John Tibbert and McManus and playing and uh, you were just you were watching these sort of players going like you've seen these lads on TV and then you know a fella from down the road who's marking them and you're going that's class um, so yeah you would want to you would definitely want to get the um, get the opportunity to play there like of course yeah last question is a question from a listener and it is around at this stage of the year how to balance losing weight or improving body composition with playing games so, any advice on that topic, Dara? Yeah, something I'm actually working with. Geez, I feel fear me athletes on at the minute is just, I suppose, that it's it's what's, what is your most important thing at the moment. Like, if you're already back with with like important league games and you're someone who's really pushing to try and make the team, is now a good, op- a good I suppose, time to, to start losing body fat? Maybe not. If you're someone who, you know, maybe you are back playing league games, but... You don't. You're not really placing a massive emphasis on them. Then you can go into a bit of cal- a bit of a calorie deficit, but actually like cycle your calories throughout the week to give yourself a bit more energy for those games. So if you say the day before the game and the day of the game, your calories might be a wee bit higher earlier in the week. You pull your calories back down and try and get them to average out across the week. And then I suppose it's about having actually smart food choices throughout that. So, um, you know, pulling fats and fiber down on days that you're actually playing and up in carb intake so you actually have plenty of fuel in the tank then for those games um, and you're not leaving yourself you know depleted of energy when giving yourself I suppose a higher opportunity to, to pick up niggles or even just not perform to, to a decent level so yeah it's, it's smart I suppose with your actual food choices smart in terms of how you're actually balancing your calories out across the week to ensure that you're still within a calorie deficit and actually tracking because it's a lot it's one thing players just do not do consistently it's actually track what you're eating and see what's going in it's the only real way to to, to get it accurate and actually make progress over a period of time tracking both body weight and calories consistently um, and making adjustments based off off that on has Dara covered it all there or do you have anything to add yeah, not exactly what I would have said. The so you have your Monday to Friday is almost like your deficit days where your calories are pulled down a wee bit lower, but then say you've given Sunday, like Saturdays you're, you're still go carb loading. Um and then Sunday's like your your sort of Saturday, Sunday series like your performance days. Um but as long as the overall weekly average is in the deficit, then you're gonna be all good. Like so nah, happy enough for that. Um he covered it. Okay, lads. Thanks again for another episode of the Backdoor Cut. To thanks to Owen, thanks to Dara for joining us, and thanks to you, our listeners, for keeping listening to us. I suppose even with all the shy talk and Dara yawning in the background every five seconds. <laughs> um, no yawning tonight. Get it shared. <laughs> it's shared. Subscribe all that crack. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. and give it five stars as well because it is a five star podcast. But thanks, lads, and we'll catch you all next week. <laughs>